area also. Lord, that you will send a hedge of angels, a hedge of protection around this house without and to come against any interruption of any sort, Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I come against any slumbering spirit. I come against any hindering spirit that would stop the seed of your word from sowing into the hearts of each person here and also each person of those that will view this message online in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Regina, when you're ready, thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. So today's message is God will make a way where there seems no way. Hallelujah. It's very fitting that we sung that last song, um, which I asked Matt to add to the playlist today because it was on my heart yesterday. In actual fact, is that every time that I may go through a certain circumstance where I feel I don't know there's a way out or I don't know how to um, how the solution or where it's going to come from, Always in my heart, I will start singing that song which says, God will make a way where there seems no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me close to his side. He will make a way. He will make a way. So we've all been through those, those times. But sometimes songs tend to stick into our memory bank. Just like scriptures, but sometimes songs come to us and it's good to profess it out, to sing it out and say, you know what, Bali's God, which is meaning surrender to God and say, you know, I don't know how I'm going to get through this circumstance, but I know that God is with me and he will be with me through this situation. Whenever you're going through a time of distress, he's promised three things. One is to be with you, to go through it with you and to pull you out of that situation. Hallelujah. No one likes to be in difficult circumstances, but they are there not to destroy us, rather than to reshape us and to bring us into God's perfect will. So the next time you go through a similar circumstance, you know, I encourage you to start to listen to what God is saying to you. What is the first song that comes to your heart, a first hymn? It could be an old hymn. It could be a modern hymn of a Christian hymn that comes to your mind that you're able to confess to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, according to Proverbs 3 verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Hallelujah. So today we're going to look at this verse where Solomon is, Solomon is believed to be the author of this particular verse. And he was saying... There are going to be times where there seems like the more you pray, the more things get worse or the more you need to pray, right? And also times where it seems as if you can see your vision and your dreams and fading and they're just drifting away. Maybe God's given you a vision and the Bible says, wait for that vision. Even if you have to tarry, wait for it, it will surely come to pass. Sometimes you can be given a vision or a dream from God and you'll say, God, where is that thing? I remember the Lord showed me I would be in Africa and then it took like 12 years for that thing to come to pass. I thought that that vision had died, but he said, wait for it. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Solomon is essentially saying that, hey, you know what? You're going to go through difficult times. You're going to go through those, but trust in the Lord. Trust in there. Don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your heart, put your trust in God. Hallelujah. So Solomon was telling us the same thing. Essentially, God was telling Joshua. Now, when we go to the first chapter of Joshua, we go to chapter one. We see three instances that God says to him, be strong and be of good courage. Hallelujah. Let's read that. So from verses 6 in Joshua 1 verse 6, it says, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all of the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left hand. Hallelujah that you may prosper wherever you go. Hallelujah. Then we go down to verse 9 and it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and be of good courage. This is three times he is saying, hey, be warned, but also encouraging him. Hallelujah. So he encourages him. He says, do not be afraid. 
nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You may not see God with you at that time, but God has promised to be with you, never forsake you. And even Jesus said, I will be with you until the end. Hallelujah. He says, there will be trouble. So I've told you these things that you may prepare, but know this one thing. I have overcome the world. So when you have those promises, when you start to doubt, when you start to go through dark times, you can say, God is with me. Hallelujah. As we were singing that song, there was one part that was important, which was God's word. The Bible says heaven and earth will fade away, but God's word will stand the test of time. Hallelujah. So God's word and God's promises are very vital. So anytime God warns us about something, we should also take probably three times to take heed to what God is saying. So just as he he had to take heed to what the danger was, he also had to stand upon the promise because God would not tell you to be strong unless there was a need for you to be alert and be concerned. And so it was when the, the, the church was told, hey, be alert, be on standby because the devil goes around roaming, roaming around seeking whom he may devour, isn't it? There was a, a warning, but then it says stand strong. So there's an encouragement. Hey, stand strong. You'll be able to fight this off, not with the power that's in you, but by the grace of the Holy Spirit that's with you, you'll be able to overcome all things. Hallelujah. God is a God that always warns us, but he encourages us that we will get through those particular things. Now, if we look at Nehemiah, we can just look at the story of Nehemiah. And he was constantly in a time that he was being attacked by the enemy. Right, What he was trying to do, his dreams, his vision to rebuild the wall, it was constantly under attack of the enemy. When they were trying to fix it, they were coming along to discourage them, trying to attack them. Hallelujah. And that's what the enemy does. He comes along when we are busy. So the enemy will get busy trying to destroy your character, your reputation, and trying to slow you down. Hallelujah. So let's look at this. The promise that God gave to Joshua in verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So the next time you feel that you've been forsaken by God, He has promised, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. And that's why Solomon said, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, trust the Lord. Put it, place that into your heart today. Trust God with whatever you're going through. Hallelujah. So we can see that if God has promised you something, even if you can't see it or how it's going to come to pass, even if you can't see when it's going to come to pass, you've got to learn to trust. Because according to Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Hallelujah. This is a promise we can take to God because we must believe that maybe you're listening today and there is someone here today that needs to know that God is with them. Maybe you've come to that point. You said, God, I'm going to trust you even though I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's around the corner, but Lord, I've decided I'm going to trust you. Hallelujah. Or maybe there's someone else that says, Lord, I give you all that I have. And that all that I have is yours. And I trust you no matter what is coming against me. Whether it be from a doctor's report. Whether it be from a bank's report. Whether it be from your employer's report. Whether it be in your marriage. Whether it be in, with your children. Whatever it is. When you learn to trust God. Nothing will come to phase you. Because you will be like, you know what? God's got this. Why am I worrying about it? Yes, I pray because the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in all prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, I let my request be made known to God. Now, when you pray about something, you've got to have the peace of God in your heart that surpasses all understanding because it guards your heart and your mind. 
But what happens? The devil comes over your mind and starts to bring thoughts there of doubt, of fear. Oh, what about anxiety? What about that thing? You've got to take that thought captive in the name of Jesus. Be gone. I've already surrendered this to God. And God's word says, be anxious for nothing. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head. Those thoughts will come. But it's what you do with those thoughts, which then eventually, if you allow that, uh, the bird to lay a nest on your head, it's going to start to manifest. And what happens is the thoughts of anxiety leads to depression, the Bible says. And depression comes into the heart. So that's why it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on the thoughts the enemy is placing into your mind, but learn to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Because if you don't, you'll be awake all night stressing about those things, won't you? You'll be like, oh, oh Lord, I can't sleep. But a person that trusts in the Lord, they can sleep. They don't have that problem. They surrender it to God. They rebuke the enemy. Every time he tries to come back, he takes it captive. Hallelujah. That is what we're called to do. Can you please fix the music? Thank you, Jesus. So maybe, or maybe you're a minister of the gospel and you've received a vision, you've received a dream about what God has called you to do, but you feel that that has faded away. You feel, where is that dream? Where is that promise that God has showed me? He has promised for those things to come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. And like Jabin, uh, Jacob, Lord, I'm going to hold on to you until you bless me. He says, I'm not going to let go. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to wrestle with you until you bless me. The Bible says the heavens suffer in violence and the violent take it by force. We need to claim what is rightfully ours and the blessings that God has promised for each and every one of us. Because let me tell you, someone else is praying for God to bless them. Are you praying for God to bless you? Are you praying to take all that God has for you? Because if you're not, someone else will pray. Someone else will take up the mantle that may be there that someone needs to um, take up within your area. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. It says, even though I can't understand, Lord, I trust you. Maybe you don't understand. It's all right. Just trust him. Friend of God. Maybe it's a promise and each of us have to. You don't have to worry about it because a promise is a promise. And God is true to what? He's true to his promise. So even though we can't understand, we trust you because a promise from God is better than money in the bank. It is not like the, any other promise that you'll ever receive. Someone can promise to meet you at 12 p.m. tomorrow and then not show up. And you can get disheartened by that. But God is not like that. He says, when you make an appointment with me, I'll be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we are the ones that tend to not meet that promise. Because when we say we're going to come to prayer, we wake up and sometimes we forget. But he is always there waiting for us. He is not like a man that he would disappoint you. That's why he created men to have flaws for you to be able to not be able to meet the standards of each person because each person will have faults. But with God, he is faithful. That's why God created us to have limitations so we could come to God. Your wife will disappoint you. Your children will disappoint you. Your best friend will disappoint you. Your pastor will disappoint you. But God will never disappoint you. And he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Maybe you can't even get hold of your pastor or your wife. There are times on the phone I can't get through to my wife. But who has promised to be with you always? God said I will be with you and I will never forsake you. Hallelujah. He has promised that. Let's look at this in Psalm 113, verse 3. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun for its going down, the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. So have you ever been in a situation that is quite hopeless? Well, let's look at this passage. We're going to look at this widow that came to the prophet Elisha. She was in an impossible situation and the debt collectors were coming to take away her sons to put them into slavery.
because that was the right according to Mosaic law that they could come and do until the debt was paid. But what happened? She had trust and faith in God. Let us read that together. Now we're going to take our text from 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. We see a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And he said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, and you, you will then pour it into those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debt. And you and your sons live off the rest. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go through this because according to Isaiah 28, 13, it says the word of the Lord was unto them by precept onto precept, line by line. So we're going to look at the treasures and the pearls that are within this little story right now. So the woman we know had two sons. Her late husband was a man who re revered God. He was from the company of the prophets. The school of the prophets trains them to serve as priests and prophets. Apparently, the family went through a hard time and must have borrowed, obviously, a large amount of money. And now her husband has died and she is unable to pay the loan. So the creditor wanted to take her two sons away as his slaves and she did not know what to do. And as I said before, according to Maya's, Ma Mosaic law, creditors could enslave debtors and their children to work off a debt when they could not pay it. Now we see that according to Exodus 21 verse 2 to 4 and also Deuteronomy 15, 12 to 18, if you want to refer to that later. So her situation, it seemed very hopeless. Maybe you're going through a situation, it feels very hopeless. Hers was extreme hopeless. She's now lost her husband. She's now about to lose her two sons. She's only got a jar of oil left in the house. She's got no food. She's got no anything. It is very, very hopeless. But she knew one thing, until she saw prophet Elijah. Hallelujah. She cried out to him, not because she believed that Elisha can give her money because in those days a prophet was not rich to some of the false prophets we are seeing today, okay? It's not about sowing your seed and get something in return. We're not talking about that here today. It was pure faith that she had. Hallelujah. Prophets are not rich. It is obvious that Elisha couldn't help her in that monetary way, right? So that's the faith we're talking about today. Right, But in her time, prophets are spokesmen for God. Hallelujah. Her late husband was a prophet, so she wanted to seek God's help. She wanted to ask God for answers to her problem. And what must she do? Let's look at this. This is an important part. Because Elijah looked at her and says, How can I help you? God is saying to you today, What can I do for you? And how does she reply? She cried out to him, not because of that situation, but God has a plan even in the very dire, straight situation that you are passing through within your life. And God revealed it to Elisha of what the issue was and how to fix it. Hallelujah. So the first thing Elisha does is to point the woman to look at her own resources. Right? He says, okay, what do you have in the house? 
It's kind of a strange thing to ask someone, isn't it? Because she has come to him with a problem. Obviously, she has nothing in the house. But he says, no, what do you have in the house? Because God said there is something in the house. I will use that to bless her. Hallelujah. So the first thing he does is point to the woman to her own resources. Hallelujah. What can she offer? Elisha did not say, let me see how much money I have and I can give it to you. Or let me see who I can ask to uh, do a, a fundraising to you or a GoFundMe or something like that. He didn't do that. He said, what do you have? What are the resources you have that God can use? Hallelujah. Let me see how much money you have. No, he didn't have much money in the bank. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So instead he said, tell me, what do you have in your house? God is going to do a miracle, but he wants us to offer what we have. According to Hebrews 11 verse 5, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. If we look at the whole of chapter 11 of Hebrews, it talks about all the fathers of faith that have gone before us that had faith, because without faith, you cannot please God. God requires something from you. Faith is not something we just sit around and just hope God is going to fix our problem. It requires an action from each person. So here we see it required an action on her part to use something. Hallelujah. So God can actually create, as we know, something out of nothing as he did with creation of all things. He spoke the word and then the Holy Spirit who was hovering manifested once the word was spoken. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is that word that became flesh. That is why we stand upon the word above all things. Because when the word is in us, the Holy Spirit is waiting across the earth to manifest itself every time someone declares the gospel. Hallelujah. Because that's the promise. When the word is spoken, the Holy Spirit will manifest when Gabriel came to Mary, he declared the word. When the word was declared, the Holy Spirit manifested inside of her. Hallelujah. So let's look at this. So we see that God wants us, God wants us to offer him what we have. And when we do so, we will also see miracles within our life. God wants us to exercise faith and to participate in his works. Now let's look at the story of the Canaanite wedding. The Canaanite wedding was a time when Jesus was invited to come along and his mum said to him, hey, can you fix this problem? And he said, hey woman, my time is not yet. But she had faith, isn't it? She had faith. And what did he say? According to the story, it says in John 2 verses 6, it says, now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece of water. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. So at this wedding feast, we see that no wine, near, uh, there was no wine, but nearby there were six big pots that were with water with inside of them. And he gave them instructions. It required something to do for that water to come. If those things weren't there, maybe there would have been no miracle. There would have been no wine. But it required something for them to do. And what did Mary say? She finished off in verse 5. And she said, whatever he says to you, do it. When God tells you to do something... Do it. You may not understand. You may not see it's going to come to pass. If God says for you to sing a song that says God will make a way where there seems no way, you don't know what that can do in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. You've got to learn to speak out in faith. Hallelujah. So we see that through that obedience, he says, fill the jars. And Mary knew the obedience was vital for this very miracle. Hallelujah. We also see with Lazarus. Now, Jesus required, according to John 11, verse 39, Jesus said this thing, Take away the stone, Martha. The sister of him who was dead said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus was about to come to the grave of Lazarus, right? And he says, he asked the people to move the stone away. 
Now, if this God who can raise the dead, don't you think he could have also moved the stone? But it required their faith to move that thing that they had there. It required them to move it for them to build up the faith for them to see the miracle. Hallelujah. God may be asking you to use what you currently have now. Hallelujah. We also see the same according to the feeding of the multitude. According to Mark 6, 38, it says, But he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out that they said five loaves and two fishes, he was able to multiply them to feed the thousand. Now, according to John 6, verses 8 to 9, we see that these loaves were actually the loaves of a young boy. <laughs> so a young boy had these loaves and fishes on him, and he was probably trying to sell them for his parents, right? It says, how many do you have? We'll buy the whole lot, you know? But through that, the multitude were fed because it required a substance. It required something that the people had a tangible thing for them to exercise their faith. Hallelujah. And they must have thought he was crazy. Do you know how many people we've got here to feed? We only have five loaves and two fishes. And he says, just gather them together. And as they started to distribute them, they just miraculously kept on filling up themselves. But not only that, they had more to take away with them. Hallelujah. So now the woman, according to the story with Elisha, she could have got angry with Elisha. He, she was coming to him for help and was asking her, what does she have in her home? Of course, we know that she didn't have enough. But we see that he says, you know, she could have turned around and said, Brother, I don't have anything. That's the very reason why I'm here to speak to you. But she didn't. She didn't look at the obvious. She saw that this man, whatever he said, she, he was speaking from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, but that was not her attitude. She wanted to do anything she can and offer everything she had. So she gave a thought and said, oh yeah, I do not have, I, I, I do have a little oil left that's used for cooking and lighting the house. And she may have expected Elisha to give her money, but instead she was to give some instructions so that she would have to do those instructions. Hallelujah. Now, according to uh, verses 3, within that same chapter, he says, Elisha said, go around and ask all the neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. He didn't just say, go and ask for one. He said, go and ask for as many as you possibly can. Hallelujah. And then according to verse 4, it says, Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your son. So it also included her sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it on one side. Hallelujah. Did she do as she was told? Yes. Because according to verse 5, it says she left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons, and they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. See, this is faith in action. She only had one pot of oil. We don't know if it was full or if it was half empty or three quarters. But whatever she had, she started to pour. She started to use it. This was her faith in action. So if you believe that this is the word of God, then she must act in obedience. Hallelujah. You must act on it. In fact, both her sons were involved in carrying the jars. They did not ridicule Elijah for his absurd instruction because they believed the word of the prophets. They could have said, hey, we're going to be put into slavery and he wants to take the only oil that we have? What about when Elijah went to the widow and her son was about to die? They were about to have their last meal. But he says, can you use what you have and make me a meal? And because of their obedience... The flour and the oil never run dry. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the water was there in a time of drought. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. This is the God we serve. If we put our trust in him and not in man and not in our circumstances, but just as Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your emotions. Lean not on your thoughts. Are our emotions controlling our life? Or is it our trusting God and standing upon the word of God? See, when your will is strengthened by the word of God, then you will no longer allow your emotions to control you. Rather, you will allow the word of God to control and lead your life. Hallelujah. 
So she, they did not ridicule, but God wants us to experience his miracles also in our lives. But God wanted us to what? To put our faith in what? In his word. That's why Joshua was said according to 1.8, it says the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. See, God, who also said to him, hey, be cautious, but don't be afraid, three times also said, you know what? If you just meditate on this word of God day and night and you put it into practice, you're not just a hearer of the word, but you're a doer of the word and you're not leaning on your own understanding, but you're trusting in God with all your heart, not worrying about the things of this world or the things that are coming against you. You will prosper and you will be blessed in all your ways. If you want to be blessed, if you want a message of blessing, here it is. Put this word into practice. There you will be blessed. Not only will you be blessed on this earth, but you'll be blessed to enter the kingdom of God because he'll say to you, my good and faithful servant, you have stood by my word, not by your emotions. You've allowed your will to be entwined with my will through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So very often we pray for the situation to change. We want God to solve our problems, but we are not willing to do as God has told us to do through his word. We receive certain instructions, some things we need to do or change, but we are unwilling to obey. I don't want to change that. I'm trying to give every excuse of why we don't want to change, right? And therefore, fail to experience the miracle that God has planned for us. We cannot believe or we are unwilling to do as what we are told. Now, I have to admit, when your children are obedient to you, you want to bless them more. But if they keep on being disobedient, you say, well, I'm sorry, you ain't going to get that thing that I promised you now because there has to be consequences for not being obedient children. How much more with God? He, He doesn't play games. But if you're good to him, trust me, the blessings will be poured about on you. And what is being good to him? Just obeying his word. Following him. Don't lean on your own understanding because where did that get you? That got you into the problems that you have today. He says, if you depart, don't depart from this. All these blessings will come upon you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we see this also in another story, according to 2 Kings chapter 5. We're now just crossed over to the next chapter. This is like the next story, the next part of Elijah's life. Right? All of a sudden, we see that there was a commander of the army whose name was Naaman. And he was a valiant soldier and a highly respected. But he had leprosy. And he came to Elisha for help. But Elisha did not even come out of his house to greet him. He thought, hang on a minute, I'm a very important person. You're not even going to come out and greet me? And he says, I don't even need to do that because the servant of that valiant soldier was a Jewish man and said, hey, there is a prophet in the land that can heal this leprosy. Hallelujah. And if it wasn't for that servant, he wouldn't have even known about this prophet. Hallelujah. So we see, I'll just start to read from certain points. Um, Okay, so we'll just start from uh, verse 8. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me. And he knew that there was a prophet in Israel. So he knew that the enemy of Israel, he thought that, hey, you know, we don't want to have a fight with that nation again because they they kicked us last time. We don't need another kicking at the moment, right? And he he tore his clothes going, oh, no, why are they coming here? They're coming to trick me. And then the prophet heard about it and said, no, just send him because he could see what his purpose was. It was to come and get healed, to bring glory to God. Hallelujah. And then we go in verse 9. Then Naaman went with his horse and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him. So he didn't even come out. Go and wash in the Jordan River seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you. He didn't even come out and see him. He just said, go and do this. 
And what did he say? He replied this, but Naaman became angry. He became furious. How dare he tell me to go and wash in that stinking river? Doesn't he know in our country we have beautiful water? It's like going to Africa and someone saying, go and wash in that river there. And you see that it's all green and polluted. And say, but, but the, the rivers in Australia are a lot cleaner than ours. I'm not going into there. Right? And, and what did he do? But then indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. He thought because he was so important that the man of God was going to come to that, but he just gave him the simple instructions that required faith. Hallelujah. So verse 12 says, Are not, are not the rivers of Damascus better than all the rivers of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went in rage. And his servant came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet has told you to do something great, would you have not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan. And according to the saying of the man of God, his flesh was restored like the fresh flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Now, everyone looks at a little child to see how the baby skin is so beautiful. Imagine that. Your skin would be revitalized. You wouldn't have to go to Botex. You wouldn't have to go to all those facial surgeries. It's like you just do as the prophet of God says. When you are obedient to God's word and you're preaching his undiluted word, your face will start to shine like it was with Moses. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you've spent time in his presence. How much more when we're obedient to God? So can God heal Naaman? Of course he can. But it required him, come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord and wave his hands. Yes, but God wanted him to exercise his faith. Hallelujah. And we also see in James 2.20, says faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. Faith without works is dead. So Jesus cannot do anything for you if you're not willing to do what Jesus is telling you to do in your situation. Hallelujah. A lot of people say to me, Pastor, just pray for me for the situation. But when I tell them to pray and fast, oh, I don't want to do that. I'll just go and find another servant of God. Well, just keep, you'll keep going around in circles until you come to that point. You say, God, I will do what you tell me to do. Some people say, can you please pray for me? And then I get them to do a whole heap of prayers for themselves. And they're like, what? I, I, didn't, I didn't ask for homework. <laughs> it's like you, you want to come and pay someone to give you a certificate. And then they say to you, okay, yeah, you'll get that when you do the homework. And it's like, well, hang on, I don't want to do the homework. You want the reward without doing the work, isn't it? But it requires faith. It requires faith for us. So you can't pray for good results in exam without studying at all. You can't pray for good health and not eat well or sleep well or exercise well. It all depends on how much you re really believe him. Because if you truly do, you'll do everything he says and not just a portion of the instructions. So we see that the woman with the woman and her son, um, Elijah said, don't ask for a few. Get as many jars as you possibly can get. They would have to go to several neighbors again and again. Some may be even far away. They kept on going. Doesn't say how many people. They could have gone to the whole village. Who knows? And there were, and there are some who do not have or any or would and would even lend them. So they had to keep on going to whoever they could. And this thing could take a long time. It was faith in action. Hallelujah. Maybe they went to all the way until the sun came down and they brought as many as they possibly can. They split up in groups to go and get as many more as they could. Doing it even when they do not fully understand what is going to happen. So it required faith. Okay, this guy's just kind of told them that means I'm going to have to return them all. What about if the people say, what, what about if he smashes them or something? You know what I mean? Like uh, they damaged the property. Now I'm not only in debt to these debtors, I'm now in debt to further people of the people I'm lending these things to. The very problem that I did of loaning things is going to be the very problem that has got me into this problem again. Right? There could have been many excuses that they were using at that time. 
So the woman had faith and God had a plan. Jesus said, let's look at this, according to Matthew 17, 20. Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here and there and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible for you. It requires faith on our part. Where does that faith start with? It trusts in faith in God. When you have faith in God, you can't please God until you have faith in Him. Hallelujah. Sometimes our circumstance bring us to a point where everything else is going bad until we are forced to come to God. So if faith, in faith, she and her young boys collected the jars. In faith, she closed the door. In faith, she began to pour the oil from her jar into one of the empty ones. The empty jar filled up, but the jar she was pouring did not run dry. It kept on pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. So it's like, wow, this is amazing. So notice this. She had just a little oil in a small jar and God used it to solve her big problem. Hallelujah. The boy had only five loaves and two fishes and God used it to feed a big crowd. We don't always need to have a big account in the bank or to do great things for God. The little we have, if we trust in Him and offer it to Him, God will use it. God will use anybody that is willing, you understand, willing. When your will is now entwined with the Word of God, God can use you. Hallelujah. That's why a lot of people say, have you paid the price? It means, have you paid the price to spend time with God? The more you spend time with God, the more the Word of God is entwined with your will to do His and not your own. It, you can be trusted. You're not going to be... Uh, you're not going to be swayed to the left or the right. You're not going to go and start looking for pots and then run off, uh, be distracted by something else. You're going to do what God has told you to do. And you're going to stick to that plan and not budge from it. Hallelujah. So she kept pouring the oil and her sons kept bringing one jar after another until all jars were full and the oil stopped. And she said, according to verse 7, she went to Elijah and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. So look how God blessed them. They trusted in God and he helped them with their situation, but not only to pay their debts, but even more, you and your sons may live off the rest. Hallelujah. We do not know how much this is, but at the end of the day, they had more than what they asked for in the very beginning. So not only God did he fix their debt, he also fixed them and gave them more. And that's how God does. Don't expect God just to fix one part of your problem. He is holistic. He wants to bless your whole situation. Not just restore your marriage, but restore your businesses, restore your finances, restore your, restore your name to be glorified that God can get the glory. God wants to do all things. He doesn't do half jobs. Hallelujah. So look how God blessed them. He gave them more. It happened with the feeding of the 5,000. It says at the end, 12 baskets was left over the fish. It says, and they took up 12 baskets full of frag, uh, fragments and of the fish. There was 12 baskets after the whole multitude. That didn't go to waste. Hallelujah. But just imagine the manna that came down. He said, don't store that up because I want you to have faith that's going to return tomorrow. Hallelujah. So it required them to have faith that God was going to provide for tomorrow. Don't put your faith in yourself because you will only be out, you will be limited to what you can do for God. When you put your trust in God, all things are possible. He can move you from the pit to the prison to the palace. Just like that. And you're ready for it because your faith is ready to operate in that level. Hallelujah. Never ever talk down. Always talk big. You know, Ida says to me, don't, don't tell everyone you're going to bring a book out. I said, I'm going to keep saying it until it comes to pass. And the more I say it, the more it's coming to pass in Jesus' name. You've got to have big visions. You've got to speak it until it comes to pass. Don't doubt. Don't waver. Don't allow the devil to say whatever. You say, no, it's going to come to pass. You've got to have big faith. Hallelujah. So let's look at this. So Esther was obedient to step out after the instructions from her uncle to approach the king. And she replied, if I perish, 
I perish. She had a faith just come and built up and turned. Tell them to fast for three days because I'm going to go and meet the king. And if I perish, I perish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have we got that type of faith? That we are ready to stand for righteousness. We are ready to stand for truth and tell them what God is about to come to pass. And let's look at this. According to the psalmist, David too called out to the Lord. And when he was in a dire straight situation, according to Psalm 27 verse 14, he prayed, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Hallelujah. He had that faith. And according to, sorry, that was verse 7 and verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Hallelujah. So there is a process that we need to cry out to God. And then there is a time of waiting upon the Lord. But the Lord will fulfill his promise. Yes. Hallelujah. So God specializes in showing his power in hopeless situation. Israel was in just such a place when God parted the sea for them, according to Exodus 13. And also we see Daniel was protected by the lion's den because God, he trusted in God. And God sent an angel to clothe the mouth of the, of the lions. Paul and Silas were delivered from, from prison, according to Acts 16, because they did not focus on their problems or their afflictions, but they worshipped God and praised him. And not only were they released, but all those that had were bound together, were loosened. Hallelujah. When you are moving in the anointing of God, all those that come around you shall be loosened. That's why the prayers I do that just started off on an idea that too many people were coming to me for prayer. And I said, I just can't do this. So I just did a recording prayer for one. And then I tried something. I said, okay, I'll try sending that to this person. <laughs> then that person's saying, rah, rah. I'm like, this works. <laughs> and then someone put my recording into a little video. I said, that's amazing. And then I said, maybe I should put that on YouTube. And then all of a sudden, within a year, as, as Tree was here, one year from now, the, the, the members were, what was it? 6,000? 8,000. 8,000 subscribers then, right? Now it's like seven, nearly 77. Yes. 1,000 subscribers. Just from those prayers and obviously the teachings, because a lot of people like prayers, but they can't handle the, the mm. substantial teaching. But I find that when people start listening to the prayers, the demons are loosened from their life. They are able to listen to sound teaching. Oh, wow. And then they're like, hey, they say to me, you know what? I can now, I can now work out who's a false prophet when they come to our church. I can wow. work out who's this. I won't just allow anyone to lay hands on me. Mm. Right, Because people are starting to waken up to the truth. Now, how do I know this truth? It's just because I've traveled so much to different places through experience. God has enabled that. And that's why through all the teachings and stuff, people keep on saying to me, you should be writing a book. You should be writing a book. Even publishing companies are saying to me, when are you going to bring a book out? I'm like, I subscribe to your channel. I'm like, what? Little old me? And every nation I go to, archbishops and bishops subscribe to this channel and invite me to come to their thing. And I'm like, do you realize how humble this place is? But that's God. God can bring you from those low places and put you into the high places like that. But you must remain humble. You must remain faithful. Hallelujah. My trust is not in my ability, but rather than the God we serve. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, 5 again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to fathom that. When I was first called, some prophet said to me, you're going to write books. And I laughed. I said, hey, hey, hey. he doesn't know my spelling. Right? <laughs> but that was what, 20, 20 plus years ago. And my, 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 all those things have improved because of reading the word of God and reading books and doing whatever. Yes, <laughs> praise God for that. Corey, you need to get that. Hallelujah. <laughs> but hey, if you can do it for me, you can do it for you. Thank you, Jesus. So let's look at this. According to Matthew 14, verse 28, it says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that, the wind was boisterous, and he was afraid, and began to sink. And he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. 
How many times have you done that? You stepped out of the boat, you're feeling good. Maybe a little bit like Elisha. He slayed the 850 false prophets. He was calling down fire from heaven. Next thing you know, he's trying to hide for his life from Jezebel. Right? Some of us have those big, we're going to walk on water. And then all of a sudden, as soon as doubt comes, as soon as he started to look towards the storm, he started to sink. And so it is with us. When we start to look at the enormity of the problems or the impossibility of the things. You know, God might give you things that are impossible. Sometimes you've got to keep them on the shelf. Like I didn't focus about going to Africa for 12 years. I put it on the shelf and I was faithful with what I was doing at the time. But when I found myself in Africa, I was like, do you remember? I'm just coming... I just forgot about that. Do you remember God said I'd be here? And the first thatch hut I slept in. That's right. I don't stay in hotels. I was staying in thatch huts in the very early days, right? I was like, praise the Lord. God wanted me here, right? Never despise humble beginnings, the Bible says. It is powerful because when you love people, it doesn't matter where God sends you. You will go. You will eat what they they eat. You will drink what they drink. And you will sleep where they sleep. Doesn't matter about all the critters and all that sort of stuff. You get over that. And that and enable me, and it's good to also go to the prayer mountain because going to the prayer mountain, we have snakes and all the other type of things. They come, but you just get used to it. Though Corey's still getting used to it, that's fine. But but we're getting better, aren't we? Amen. From when you first went up, you're getting stronger. Amen. Matt is good. He picks them up and waves them around. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Thank you, Jesus. So Peter had to respond to the master's instructions for him to see the miracle, and so do we. We have to respond to what God is telling us. Don't don't just be in this unbelief, but be, be in faith. See, we can't walk on water without first getting your feet wet. You, you can't stand in the fiery furnace without first walking through the fire. You can't kill Goliath without looking or looking your giant dead in the eye. You have to confront these things. You can't claim healing if you've never been sick. Isn't that true? Hallelujah. You can't shout for a financial miracle if you've never experienced being broke or being desperate or in need. Hallelujah. You can't, you, uh, there is no way someone can be healed of drug addiction if that person has never been hooked on drugs in the first place. Isn't it? Because it requires an experience. It requires God to visit you in your time of need. And that's what God does. And God can't save someone who has never been lost. But I believe in my heart, even today, there is someone here today who is saying, you know, despite of the troubles that I'm going through, I don't want to lean on my own understandings. I want to trust in God. See, when the road gets dark, can you still trust him? When the winds of trouble are blowing, can you still trust him? When, you are, when, when they are dragging your name through the mud, can you still trust him? There are some people that will just never like you. Don't try to please everybody. Just focus on the people that you can make an impact on. Hallelujah. Some people are jealous because you shine brighter than others. But don't worry about them. Keep your focus. Because those people are sent by the agent are the agents of Satan to come and take you off the path that God has for your life. Yes. Keep moving forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at this. Um, when the walls begin to close in, can you still trust him? When cancer is in your body, can you trust him? When diabetes is in your body and the doctors cannot even help you or even find a solution, can you still trust him? When blood pressure is rocking back and forward and they don't even know what to do, can you still trust him? When the pains that you have and you can't even bend over, can you still trust him? Hallelujah. When you're late in the night and you can't and the pain is there, can you still trust him? When your burdens are heavy and weighing you down, can you still trust him? When you can't feel your head, and, and you can't feel your head or you feel that you've just got this headache. And there's so many people suffer with migraine headaches continually. And most of the time, sometimes it's a spiritual problem. right? God is not the author of any sickness. You've got to understand that. It, he has come to heal all who is oppressed and also sick from the devil, the Bible says. So we're not saying, you know, 
we, we thank the Lord for doctors, we thank the Lord for medicine, we thank the Lord for all those things, but there are some things that people come to me and say, you know, my doctor can't even find out what's going on. And then all of a sudden I pray for that person and the demon manifests within the person and then they are set free and then the problem's gone. They go back to the doctor and says, well, maybe we can't officially say that you're healed, but we don't see that thing here anymore, right? Because it was spiritual. Every problem has an origin, it has a genesis. It came from somewhere. God doesn't cause that problem, it's the devil. But we've got to learn to trust in God that he is the one that can bring us out of that situation. Maybe you're down to your last uh, five cents. Can you trust him? When you're lonely and there's no one there, can you still trust him? When the tears are running down your faith, can you still trust him? When you can't even, uh, you can't stand any longer, can you trust him? When you are in between jobs, can you still trust him? When deliverance doesn't come right away, can you still trust him? Preacher, can you preach when there is nobody listening? I used to do it, I used to go on the streets and preach. If no one listened to me, i go there. I, I knew, but you've got to understand that angels are witnessing everything you do. So there might be small number here, but that, that's what uh, uh, Elisha said to his servant. He said, do you know that those that are with us are more than those that are against us? Do you know how many angels are listening to this message and rejoicing? Hallelujah! So it's got nothing to do with numbers rather than your obedience to what God is calling you to do. Because there is a cloud of witnesses witnessing what we're doing. They're writing it in the books of life and they're saying, hey, Pastor Robert was preaching a good message this Sunday. Hallelujah. Bringing glory to God. He looked at the hearts of every, every person worshipping here today yes. and he recorded in heaven. Yes. Everything we do is being recorded. When you're all alone and you're praying to the Lord, when you're on your knees, when you're crying, God sees those things. The angels of God are reporting those things to God. Nothing you do is not being seen by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, or even to the worship leader, Matt. When you're worshipping and no one looks like they're worshipping in spirit and truth, can you still worship me? It's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with your individual, what you're doing. Hallelujah. Can you pray when people talk about you and you feel like you want to cause revenge? Go back to pray. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I've been running for Jesus a long time and I'm tired. Yet I have learned to trust in Jesus, and I've learned to trust in God. Well, that was a good lesson, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout, I don't believe he brought us this far to leave us. Do you believe God has brought you this far just to leave you in the mud? No, he's brought you to this point so you could go even further. Hallelujah. God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. But the thing is, the prophecy comes, and then there's the process. Unfortunately, not many people like the process, but as long as you remain faithful to the process, the promise shall surely come to pass. Hallelujah. God's word is a prophecy to each of our lives. It's the best prophecy because it will come to pass. It doesn't matter if it was a false prophet. If it is God's word, it's true. Hallelujah. He doesn't lie. That's why prophecy should always be backed up with the word of God. Not a hairy, fairy thing that people want to hear today. It needs to be backed up with a tangible substance of God's word that you can go keep on standing upon and everything that is backed up with the word of God shall come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Imagine this. Solomon said, lean not on your own understanding. Solomon was saying, you are not going to always understand why God is doing what he's doing and you are not going to always see what God is doing But know this, that God is moving people in your path and opening the new doors and closing old doors. That's what God does. You know, I tried to go to Canada this year. And for some reason, this visa was just a problem. And I was like, this has never happened to me before. And I was like, wow, I'm really going to miss this conference, unfortunately. And I did. But then all of a sudden, two months later... All of a sudden, they sent me an email, your thing has been approved. And I was like, oh, well, it's a bit late now. But the good thing is it's been approved till um, 2022, so I can go now. But it was for some reason, the door just closed. I had to accept that. But while I was waiting, 
I was preparing for this book that God has been uh, telling me to do, starting to put it into action, started to put the stuff that is in notebooks and different things, because many of the things were lost through an external hard drive and a laptop that was stolen on a recent missionary trip. So a lot of things the devil tried to destroy, it's going to require harder work to transcribe the things from uh, YouTube down. But that's, I've had to do, we've had to do a lot of that. And, and, and God has utilized the time that I've had staying around to be able to do those things. So you don't understand God's timing or God's season. So let's look at this. Somebody said to me once that, that this far by faith, leaning depending on the ward, the, the Bible says, according to uh, Psalm 35, it says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. You may go through things. Maybe you know people that have gone through things. Maybe you've gone through things. There have been times that you didn't understand God. But if we pass the test of time, there will be joy in the morning. Hallelujah. It's only for a season. It's only for a time. There may be mourning, but in the end, there's a promise of joy. He can turn your ashes into beauty. Hallelujah. So if God did it for the widow, should he not be able to do it for each of us? Of course he can. If God did it for me, he can do it for you. If God did it for you, he can do it for me. Hallelujah. This is the God we serve. Isaiah 43 verse 19 says this, I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. God is a God that makes a way. Even that song had all those you know, portions of those scriptures. He will make a way through the deserts. He will make a way where there seems no way. He will make a way for us in the toughest of situations. This seems to be God's speciality. He works in tough situations, people. You're never a tough case for God because that's his speciality. When everyone else wants to run away from you, God is saying, come here. We specialize in tough situations. Hallelujah. That's why I love God. That's probably why God finds some of the toughest situations and specializes it in and makes those people into the strongest faith people that we know today. Because they were once this, but now they are this. Hallelujah. He's looking for those tough situations. If you're in a tough situation, then you are with a God that can do the impossible. Hallelujah. And you aren't you thankful? Because God has it all figured out so you don't have to worry he has figured out the situation he's working on our behalf even when we can't see it all he has a plan and purpose in whatever we walk through he has cut a clear path through anything and in seemingly hopeless situations where we can't see any way out God's power has the opportunity to shine the greatest. It is in those times that when we come to the end of ourselves, when we know we can't depend on our own abilities, on anything we have, anything we own or any person, but instead are remained with our total complete reliance on Him. That is when God moves. It is those times that we are and have the most powerful deliverances, healings, and also testimonies, because our complete trust was in God. And that's why Solomon says, don't put your trust in yourself. Put your trust completely in your heart, into God. Hallelujah. He can make a way through the wilderness and cause streams to rise up, bringing refreshing even in desert times. He can split the sea. He can move mountains. Any, any barrier before us can be removed. And allow us to walk through even on dry ground. Mm. Hallelujah. He parted those Red Seas. And they walked on dry ground. They didn't even have to get their shoes muddy. How good is God? He knows everything. He can conquer any giant and bring victory to his children. He can close the mouths of lions, providing safety. He can open prison doors, setting the captives free. He can protect us from the flames of adversary. Hallelujah. He can carry us through any storm. That miracle that you've been waiting for, God is about to do it in your life if you will just trust in Him. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24 says, He who has called you is faithful and He will do it. Yes. That is God's promise. 
That means that miracle you've been waiting for, He will do it. That means that promotion that you've been waiting for, He will do it. That vindication that you want God to turn around those voracious or ferocious things that have been said against you, He will turn it around and vindicate you because He will do it. The sickness that won't seem to go away, the healer, the healer, the God that healeth thee, He will come, Jehovah Rapha, and He will do it. Hallelujah. That spouse that you've been asking for, the one that you've been waiting for, you don't feel it's coming. God will provide for you as you wait for him in his timing. Hallelujah. The house that you're believing for, that you never thought you could own or ever have for. Maybe your parents rented their whole lives and God is saying to you, no, you're going to have the promise to that house. He will provide for you. Hallelujah. The baby you've been praying for and you're saying, God, my womb is not opening in the time that I thought. God, who can open closed wombs, will also open that womb for you as long as you remain faithful to him and unsaved loved ones that you've been praying for. And it's impossible for them to come to God. Only God can change hearts. Even the prodigal son, he had to go to that point that he could come to a point that God could humble him and change his heart to bring him back to the Father. It is he who can do it and he will do it for your family. That marriage that you want to be restored, he will restore it. Just keep waiting upon him. Don't budge to the left or to the right. Don't go and take counsel from people that would tell you anything contrary to the word of God. Your decision today must be to walk by faith and not by sight. To walk in revelation and no longer in the reason of your mind because we don't allow our emotions to drive us or lead our lives but our will must be entwined in the word of God in his promises and he will bring it about. He is a God of miracles. He never changes. He is the same yesterday, today and forever and he will fight for you today as long as you remain faithful to him. He is the God who said, I am the beginning. I am the end. And he has conquered death. If he can conquer death, how much can he do in conquering every situation that you are facing in your life today? He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. He said, I am the I am that I am. Tell them the I am has sent you. Hallelujah. That God that says, I am. As we said in my teaching the other day, there is a subject and there is a verb within a sentence that makes up the structure of a sentence. The I am has a subject and it has a verb. He is complete in himself. He is complete. The God that we look to is complete in everything. And you can trust in Him. You can put your trust in Him. No matter what you are facing. No matter what you are going through. When Solomon said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge Him. And He shall make your path straight. He is the God that will make a path straight. If He can bring... Uh, you know, a stream through the deserts. Mm. You know how dry it gets in the deserts when we were crossing Australia and we were going through all the barren places. It gets kind of dry out there. But imagine this God that can bring water mm. into the desert. He can turn bitter situations into sweet as it was when they came to the pools of bitter waters. Moses said, God, what will I do? He said, grab the tree and placed the branch into the waters. And as soon as he did that, that water changed from bitter waters into sweet. He can turn any bitter situation in our lives into something sweet if we will just trust him. Jesus Christ went to the cross it was very bitter for him to go through and took our sins upon himself. As Ida rightly said, he came as God, but he was all God and also all man. He was all God because he was without sin. And no one is without sin other than God. Hallelujah. But he was all man that he could take the sins of the world upon himself. Hallelujah. But he defeated sin and he also defeated death. So when he went to the cross, that's why the Bible says, says if they had known they would have never placed him to the cross because it is at the cross 
we have our victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you have your victory. When he said it is finished, he means it is finished. And so it is in your life. Whatever the devil has been trying to do in your life, it is finished yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Yeah. That's why they said if they had known that demons would have done everything to stop them from chaining him, from nailing him, from striking him, from whipping him, from, from bringing uh, uh, pain and inflicting to him to stop him from going to the cross. Because they didn't know. He was a lamb led to the slaughter. He didn't even utter a word. Hallelujah. But he knew. He said, Father, if this is not your will, then take this cup from me. But it was the will of the Father. And the Bible says it even pleased God that he sent his son to die from you and me. And that's why we can say, the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, yes. that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That is the God we serve. Yes. He became a lamb. But he's not coming back a lamb the second time. He is coming back a lion. Yeah. And he will come back to judge the living and the dead. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus Christ saves. If you are hearing this message today, if this is the first time, then this message is for you. God loves you. God wants to save you from yourself. Because when you try to do things on your own, things will not work out according to plan. Because we're leaning on our own understandings. Not on the understandings of God. But God is here today. God is reaching for your souls. God is saying to you today, I have come to die for you. The Father did not send an angel to die for you. He did not send an animal to die for you. He didn't send another human being to die for you. He sent his most beloved gift, the firstborn of heaven, the darling of heaven, Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to die for you, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life mm -hmm. and that is the cause the devil comes to kill still and destroy but Jesus Christ comes to bring life and life in abundance mm -hmm. and he wants to bring life he wants to bring those living waters to spring forth from your life he said that from within side of you shall spring living waters he says whoever drinks of this water shall not ever thirst again he is that water that can bring life to each of us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just want you to bow your heads right now. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that is here right now, that is hearing this prayer. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you will just come. Lord Jesus, and that you will minister to each and every person here today and those that are listening in on afar. Lord, I pray for those that you're calling to come back. I pray for those that you are calling today. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for every soul, Lord, that you want to bring into your kingdom. We're going to say a prayer, and I want you to say this prayer with all of your heart today, as though it's the first time you've ever said this prayer. Maybe it is the first time. The Bible says if we confess with our sins, confess of our sins, and believe that Jesus died on the cross, and then he rose again three days later, he defeated death. He defeated sin at the cross. He defeated death three days later. Hallelujah. And if you believe that within your heart, the Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So I want you to repeat this prayer. You could say it with your mouth. You must also confess it. So you may confess it with your mouth, but also believe it in your heart. So I just want you to repeat this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father this, morning, this morning, we repent, we repent of, all of, of all of our sins. Wash us, Wash us with, your blood. with your precious blood. Thank you, Thank you. Father, Father, for sending your Son, for sending your son. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And, we and we receive your Son, your son. Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, as our Lord, as our, Lord, as our, God, as our God, and our personal Savior. And, and from today, it's a, it's a new beginning. We are born again. We are born again. Father, Father, send your Holy Spirit, send your Holy Spirit to, lead us, to lead us, to guide us, to guide us into, all into all truth. We thank you for the word. You for the word. As you are the word, that became flesh. you are the word that became flesh, you are the beginning, you are the, you are the end. You are the end. 
And you are coming back soon. You are coming back soon. We thank you, Lord. We, thank you, Lord. we commit our lives, we commit our, lives our, futures, our futures, and we receive, and we receive every, spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven, that comes from heaven today, today, today in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Did you break a string, brother? <laughs>